So this is an overview which highlights so as I said, we looked at three financial years, and this is a highlight of all the energy subsidies um, by energy type from 2017 to 2020. So the energy subsidies quantified in this study totaled to 172 billion rand um, in the most recent year, 2020 to 2021. That equates to about 10.4 billion US dollars. So this includes subsidies to fossil fuels, electricity, hydroelectricity, nuclear, as well as carbon tax exemptions and bailouts for several carbon intensive industries. The largest subsidies um, were for fossil fuel and coal fired electricity. Um, and there were a significant number of subsidies for, um, excuse me, a significant number of subsidies for renewables were identified, um, but we could not quantify them because of the lack of data. Um, so also it's important to note that the total subsidy estimate should be viewed as conservative given the number of unquantified subsidies. Um, if we look to the first graph um, over here, 2017 to 2018, and then we compare that to here, we can see that energy subsidies more than tripled from 58 billion uh, rand, which is about 4 billion US dollars, um, to 172 billion, as I've said, in 2020, 2021. So the main reasons for these increases were uh, the bailout um, of ESCOM, which equated to 56 billion rand in 2020, 2021. Um, and this was the largest quantified subsidy for that year and equivalent to about 10% of ESCOM's total accumulated debt of about 488 billion. Um, so this effective, effectively, excuse me, supported the ongoing combustion of coal in South Africa, which um, made up 88% of the electricity mix in 2018 um, with ESCOM producing more than 90% of total power supply. The second um, largest contribution to this uh, was tax-free emission allowances for energy production under the carbon tax emission, excuse me, carbon tax regime. Um, and this was estimated to be 47 billion rand of foregone revenue in 2020-2021. So the carbon tax was introduced in June 2019. Um, therefore, exemptions were included for part of 2019, 2020, and then for the full 2020, 2021 financial year. Um, and then we also saw that electricity subsidies increased if you compare from 2017 to 2021, 8% to 16 billion rand, um, and oil and gas subsidies increased by 18% to 35 billion rand. We also saw a rise in support for nuclear energy, which increased from 519 million rand in 2017, 2018, to 920 million rand in 2020-2021. And this support largely consisted, consisted of direct transfers to the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation. Um, in terms of renewables, there was insufficient data publicly available to quantify the value of renewable energy subsidies for the most recent financial year. So as we have just saw, you know, the major subsidies now, in terms of classifying them by subsidy mechanisms, um, we saw that the majority of subsidies were delivered as a tr as transfer of funds and liabilities, notably bailouts, or as foregone revenue, such as the carbon tax and VAT exemptions. The remainder comprised income or price support, um, and then the provision of goods and services below market values. In terms of renewable energy policies, we identified six support policies for renewable energy in South Africa. And the only two that could be quantified were funding for institutions to support research and development. Um, and also to note, to estimate some of these would require some method, me, me, methodological estimation. Um, but to do this, we would need to identify a suitable price for wholesale price of electricity. So now moving from, you know, uh, the bailouts to now the consumption revenue and then the production revenue. So consumer energy taxes are a key source of revenue in many countries because they are relatively simple to administer and difficult to evade. Um, they also have low price elasticity in the short term and can be designed to be progressive. The vast majority of fossil fuel and carbon taxes quantified um, are derived from transport fuel consumption in South Africa. So the link, excuse me, the single largest source of tax revenue um, we, as we found in the report, is the general fuel levy, which generated almost 83 billion rand in 2019-2020, which is about 5.9% of all government revenue and about 1.6% of the GDP. The revenue from the general fuel levy is reduced by around 10% once diesel fuel refunds are taken into account. Um, and these rebates are foregone tax revenue and therefore represent subsidies. 
according to the definition that we used. It is also evident that at present, with all the exemptions, the carbon tax does not contribute much in terms of government revenue and decreasing the cost of consuming fossil fuels. This is just a closer look into the consumption revenue. Um, <clears throat> and the road accident levy, RAF levy, um, at 2 rand 18 per litre for both diesel and petrol and diesel, is paid into a fund that compensates victims of traffic accidents. Um, and the RAF levies generated um, about uh, 289 mi uh, million US dollars in 2019-2020, where you can see here the RAND value, 4,786 million um, in RAND. Um, however, the funds received from the RAF fuel levy on an annual basis are not sufficient to pay annual liabilities and debt, and ha excuse me, and debt has been accumulating for several decades due to this. So as a result, the RAF levy has been regularly increasing over the years. So in 2019-2020, the RAF had an unfunded claims liability of 331 billion rand, resulting in delays in the payments of claims. Um, there are also fuel levies on aviation fuel um, to discourage high octane use in inland areas and to recoup transport expenses and the cost of injecting an illuminating dye into paraffin to trace illegal adulteration of diesel. So customs and excise are also applied to fossil fuels, um, both for petrol and diesel, but disaggregated revenue data was not available. The fuel price build-up also includes wholesale and retail margins, several minor levies, and distribution and transport costs. So now moving from consumption to production revenue, um, the two quantifiable sources of revenues from fossil fuel production were the corporate income tax, and the Mineral and Petroleum Resource Royalties, which in the graph you'll see is abbreviated to MPRR. So MPRR is a resource rent or royalty rather than a tax, as it compensates the states, the state, excuse me, the South African state, for the permanent loss of non-renewable resources. So in 2019-2020, um, coal generated um, 1,741 million rand, um, or 15% of MPPR revenues. Um, and then the amount generated by oil and gas was not publicly available, but it is likely to be low, um, given South Africa's domestic crude oil resources are small, producing around um, 1,800 barrels per day. Then the second production review uh, line item, the corporate income tax, um, amounted to 1,593 million in 2019-2020, as we can see over here. Um, and then in addition, personal income tax from individual taxpayers <clears throat> with businesses with business with business income, excuse me, from coal and petroleum sector was around 82 million rand um, for 333 taxpayers in 2019. So the full amount of income tax paid from those employed in the fossil fuel sector would be significantly higher, but disaggregated data is not available for individuals without business income. So I apologize, there's a lot of numbers, but it's important to understand, you know, what does this actually mean um, for South Africa and for the energy sector? So this section estimates key externalities for the combustion of fossil fuels in South Africa based on data obtained from a literature review using conservative values. So also just a caveat before we dive into these numbers, um, for the estimated cost per unit, we use publicly available figures. So there are others. So depending on your view on what the social cost of carbon is or the figures that you use, um, these numbers could change significantly. So we want to situate this discussion within that context. But we have taken very fairly conservative numbers. So it's important to note that quantifying externalities is challenging because it involves assigning financial value to non-financial impacts. So even where market prices are available, such as the carbon price, the correct price um, can be contentious. So due to the complexity of estimation, we have limited quantification to three costs, although there are um, many other negative externalities um, that contribute to the true negative external cost of fossil fuels. So we looked at three, so mortality due to air pollution, morbidity or disease due to air pollution, and then climate change impacts of greenhouse gas emissions. So for morbidity, we only accounted for work loss days due to the challenge, challenges of costing the health and pro productivity costs associated with hospital emissions due to air pollution-related cardiovascular diseases. Societal costs, um, so societal costs associated with air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions by fossil fuel use in South Africa were estimated to be a minimum 
of 550 billion rand, which is about 33 billion US dollars per year. So this estimate, again, to reiterate, was conservative, since only fossil fuel consumption was included, um, and conservative or mid-range values from the literature were, were used. Um, then, well, I won't go through all of it, but then to look at now comparing the fossil fuel subsidies, tax and non-tax government revenues, and the social costs. So when we compared these, um, we found that externalities were real, the social costs are five times higher than the revenues that government generates from fossil fuel taxation. So while there is uncertainty about some of these estimates, the overall finding is that social costs far exceed revenues um, generated from fossil fuels. Um, both subsidies and tax revenues um, are far outweighed by the social costs, as I said, but the public are paying the price for the use of fossil fuels and paying a much greater bill than the government is. The cost of fossil fuels to the community um, are higher um, than the revenue that they can generate. So this brings about questions as, are these fiscal instruments suitably um, targeted in South Africa? Now to look at some of the key findings and recommendations from the report. So I'll just look at two for the interest of time, but the first really is that fossil subsidies are too high in South Africa. So as I've already stated, um, in the most recent financial year, uh, these subsidies amounted to 172 billion rand. Um, and in thinking about some recommendations, um, there's a need to reform and reduce bailouts to ESCOM. So bailouts distort the price of electricity generated from coal and fail to account for its true cost um, and similarly make the price of electricity generated from coal seem cheaper than it actually is. Of course, we understand that um, reducing bailouts to ESCOM has been necessary to date due to the financial position that the utility was in. But if future bailouts are to continue, uh, a, a recommendation could be to tie these bailouts to um, reforming the, the utility to invest in more renewable energy. Then the second recommendation is about the carbon tax. So there's a need to end exemptions to the carbon tax. Such a tax should be applied across the economy at a level that is proportional to the external cost of the emissions. And again, we're not saying we're not um, saying that we should have an abrupt end of these emissions, excuse me, exemptions, but that gradually um, the carbon tax exemptions should be phased out. 